Oop. Boom. Boom. I think we're ready to talk about autumnal books. Hello, so welcome to another video in which I ramble about books that I really like. This time, my favorite type of recommendation video, it is a autumnal, fall, dark, cozy book recommendation video. It's raining outside probably. Yuki. It's just the fall is that season where we're all going inside again. You know, you're probably just having a cozy little time by yourself by the window. It's probably raining. You're making a hot drink for yourself and it's time to cozy up and read a book. Preferably a book that really fits that atmosphere, you know? Halloween is coming up. Maybe you want something a little bit spooky, a little disturbing, maybe some horror, maybe just a little spooky vibes. Whatever floats your boat. And I love recommending books like that, so... Today we're gonna do a fall autumn book recommendation video, but, but, there's a catch. I make a video like this every year, and every year I talk about the same books. <laughs> and I feel like everyone makes videos like these, and we all talk about the same books, because there are just certain books that are just so perfect for fall and autumn that we just can't stop recommending them. <laughs> but in this video I also want to take some time to recommend, hopefully, some books that I don't talk about all the time, and that people don't recommend all the time. For autumn at least in my experience. So what this video is going to be is first I'm just gonna quickly show you the books that are typically associated with fall that I think are really good because they are just really good books and they are perfect for the cozy autumn weather but you know we talk about them to death kind of. I know that Halloween is coming up but it doesn't mean we have to be talking about these books to death. And in the second half of the video I'm gonna be talking about some other books that I really recommend that maybe people don't talk about as much and that I want to give some special time and hopefully you will find some books that you actually have not yet seen a thousand times when people recommend fall books to you. But first, I just want to give a quick shout out. That sounds like I'm gonna do a sponsorship. I am actually also gonna do a sponsorship. Let's do that first. <laughs> Hello, we are interrupting this program for a message from our lovely sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where thousands of creative and curious people come together to explore their creativity. If you want to get creative and learn new things, look no further. I'm trying to rhyme this. Skillshare is where it begins. That almost rhymed. <laughs> they offer thousands of inspiring classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Recently, I have been watching a video on plants at home by Christopher Griffin, where they talk about how you can take care of your plants and use plants to make your living space nice. Now, hopefully I will have the skills to keep alive more plants than just the ones that are impossible to kill. And I have a great offer for you. The first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium memberships. So make sure to click that link and start exploring your creativity today. I tried using this as a microphone. Did that check out? Did that work? But the second thing that I want to give a quick shout out to is the book that you should read right now if you haven't already is Read Dune by Frank Herbert because the movie is coming out. By the time this video is up, you still have 10 days to read it, which is kind of a challenge because although I really enjoyed this book, it's kind of a slog to get through. But hey, if you're in the US, you still have a full month, more than a full month. So you have no excuse. Read this book before the movie comes out. You can only read half the book because the movie is only half the book. Life hacks. You know, if you're already missing the summer vibes, read a book about water-starved deserts. <laughs> okay, now first, let's quickly talk about some books that everyone always talks about that are book for fall that I just quickly want to mention. First one I want to talk about is a fairy tale retelling. It's very magical. There's a good enemies to lovers romance in it. Very nature focused, book for fall, and that is Uprooted by Naomi Novak. I'm gonna say this about every book, but I've talked about this book a lot. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, uh, but also mostly takes a lot of inspiration from Slavic folklore about this valley where every seven years the monster from the tower, the wizard, takes a girl with him to the tower 
power and people don't know what's happening to her and our main character gets chosen by this wizard to be taken to his tower and he teaches her magic they gotta fall in love there's a war there's magical trees the good stuff then we have a TikTok favorite that is The Invisible Life by Addie LaRue by V. Schwab. This is an epic tale of Addie who is cursed to be forgotten every time someone stops seeing her so no one will ever remember her. That is until someone does. And we follow her life, we look back on her already 300 year old life. I think this Birth for Fall is one of those books that has a very cozy vibe, very nostalgic vibe to it because we follow her over 300 years. There's a lot of focus on history and art and I think that's perfect for Fall. So in case you somehow haven't heard of this book yet, you should read it. <laughs> Another book that you might have been wanting to buy for a very long time, you might have already owned it, but you still haven't read it yet, but you really want to, now is the perfect time to finally read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. The cozy, beautiful, magical, dreamlike book that I think is perfectly fit for fall. If you want to read a book about a magical circus with wonderful characters that will take you on a trip like a dream, Need I say more? I don't. Of course, autumn is the season for people who enjoy dark academia, so I also want to recommend a dark academia book. I always go with If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, which is about a group of students at this very prestigious theater school, where in the future we follow one of the theater kids that just got out of prison, and then we also follow them like back in time, where it kind of goes over everything that happened when he was like a student at this theater school and what got him into prison. Really great if you like Shakespeare or are really into theater, or if you're like me and you're not into any of those things, it's still good. Staying in the same vein of, oh, I just, I damaged this book. Oh well doesn't really matter. Staying in the same vibe of Dark Academia but adding a sprinkle of fantasy to it and a little more extra scoops of occult dark horror-ish themes and of course I could not make this video without recommending Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. It's been two years and we still don't know where the sequel is coming so you still have plenty of time to read this. <laughs> and you'll be able to catch up. <laughs> Takes place at Yale. Emo protagonist. There are ghosts. There are necromancers. And there are pretentious people at Yale. It's a thriller. It's a murder mystery. It has everything for fall. And the last one of the classic fall recommendations, I want to give a shout out to Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. The only horror book I've ever read, I think. I really need to read more horror. I love horror movies. Somehow I haven't read any horror books except for this one. Think 50s Mexico, think a gothic mansion, think slowly losing your mind, think a wealthy family with a dark past. It deserves the hype. It's good for fall. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, I want to go into the other books that I highly recommend for fall that maybe you haven't heard of yet. I'm not saying that guaranteed you've never heard of these, like some of these are very popular books still, but it's just that, you know, it's not in the same level of the books that I just talked about. Okay, so the first book that I really want to talk about is actually a short story, and that is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkin per per Perkins. Gilman. <laughs> it's a short story, I know. I never thought that I would enjoy short stories. I never thought that I could read a short story and actually enjoy it because I couldn't imagine something so short being able to do anything to me, having enough time to actually make an impact on me. Well, this short story, which is only 20 pages, changed my opinion on that. I wanted to say this is one of my favorite short stories of all time, but it's also Maybe the only one I could. <laughs> this is a short story that was written in, when was it? 1892. This story is actually very much based on the author's own experience. The story is about a woman who after she has what we now know as postpartum depression, it is then diagnosed as a kind of hysteria. She is prescribed a rest cure. You know, she's not to leave her room, not, don't, don't do any work, don't talk to anyone, don't think, don't be intellectual in any way, just, be in the same room 
every day until you're cured because that's gonna cure your depression that's what they thought back then and that's what they described women and the short story describes her experience that she spends all these days just in the same room doing nothing but only the yellow wallpaper that interests her in any way that she can stare at all day and she is slowly losing her mind throughout the story it's so good <laughs> Not only is it like wonderfully written, it's like a beautiful description of this woman kind of like losing her mind, like the way that that's presented was so well done. It's creepy in a way that anything from the 19th century can be creepy, you know, like if you compare this to like today's horror movies, it's not very scary, but back in the day this was almost actually it was refused publishing because people thought it to be too disturbing to share with anyone and in a way it's also kind of a feminist critique because it does for the first time kind of show the predicament that women were in and how this kind of like rescued this encouragement to just do nothing is not a good thing that's not a good thing <laughs> I'm sure you may be familiar with the trope, um, the woman in the attic, which we also see in things like Jane Eyre. It was very popular in like gothic times. This is the first time we see a story from the perspective of the crazy woman in the attic. Because it's a classic, you can even find this for free online and just quickly read it online if you don't want to pay for it. And that's legal because it's a classic, so. Then I want to recommend a middle grade, folklore inspired, slightly creepy book, and that is The Girl and the Ghost. This book is loosely inspired by Malaysian folklore, it also takes place in Malaysia, and we follow a girl and a ghost. A ghost who just loses its old master, and its new master is this young girl named Suraya. She's like this really sweet girl, whereas the ghost is kind of more, a little more vindictive, very jealous, very protective. He wants to protect her, but in doing so, he is very willing to hurt other people. It's kind of about the dynamic between those two, very much about friendship and like jealousy within friendship. There's a little quest going on towards the end of the story. Relatively creepy for a middle grade, so if you want something kind of creepy, but you also know that you're kind of squeamish and easily scared, I think this level of creepiness is good. Then I want to recommend for fall Almost Everything by Kazuo Ishiguro. I know he's like very well-known author <laughs> but I don't often see him recommended in like fall book recommendations but I think his books are perfect for autumn because they all have a very melancholic vibe to them that I think really fits those rainy days. You know, you want to kickstart the seasonal depression the right way. We have The Remains of the Day if you prefer a more character-based story with no speculative elements about this butler that kind of looks back on his life as a butler and like the things he did. I'd recommend this if you really like contemporary fiction. Then we have Clara and the Sun which is about an artificial friend, kind of like a robot friend and you see the world from her eyes as she is bought by this little girl that she is going to keep company. It's about how this AI looks at the world, how the world responds to her. Very beautiful, very melancholic. Kind of explores a few things about like the possibilities of you using AI in personal relationships. And then my favorite and never let me go, this one is like that perfect combination between very nuanced, well-written characters. It's melancholic, it has a dystopian element to it that I can't talk about because it would be a spoiler. It has a very mystery element to it. it. Gives you a little rainy day in your mind. Then, another book that I want to recommend because I just realized that actually I have read another horror book before and that is Wilder Girls. One of my favorite movies of all time is Annihilation fantastic. That's my favorite type of horror. This book, Wilder Girls, gives me similar vibes. It's kind of like a dystopian setting of a bunch of girls that are trapped on this island because they've all been infected with something. They don't really know what, but they know that it gives them all kinds of mutations, like different girls react to it in a different ways. The main character has like an eye that doesn't work anymore. There are girls that have like scales all over their body. All sorts of things are happening to their body and they don't really know 
what it is and sometimes they go on missions outside going on to like find food but they're not allowed to go anywhere or go off the island and it's just kind of about uncovering what's going on. There's a sapphic romance, although there's not a lot of focus on romance in this book at all. I wouldn't call this book outright scary, but it definitely has a very disturbing vibe. It, uh, again, it's like the movie Annihilation. <laughs> then I want to talk about a hidden gem that I got for my birthday one day from a friend who also really enjoys hidden gems, and that is Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. This is a mystery thriller book about a bunch of girls that are attending Innovations Academy where they will be taught to be perfect, prim and proper, beautiful girls so they can be wed off to wealthy men. They don't really know anything about the outside world, they don't really know anything about themselves, they don't really know anything about each other. They just know they have this very strict gray structure to their lives and they're gonna be brought up to be perfect prim proper little girls. But slowly but surely throughout this book they're trying to figure out what's going on, why they're there, what they're used for, there's some solidarity forming between them, it's not all good and maybe they don't actually want to be there. Very nice, again this is not scary, it's more of a mystery. Also has that very disturbing melancholic vibe like a lot of these other books. Some good plot twists, hidden gem, would recommend. And then the last book that I want to give a shout out is The Book of Lost Things. This is the book you should read if you want to ruin your childhood. <laughs> it is a horror retelling. Oh, a third book, a third horror book that I have read. Apparently I've read three horror books in my life. This is a horror retelling of all of your favorite childhood fairy tales. It's about this young boy that kind of ends up in like another world in this kind of like fairy tale forest that is full of fairy tale creatures, except they're all horrible, bloodthirsty, murderous maniacs now. And he's just trying to survive. This book strikes like that perfect balance between just horror and creepy, but still fairy tale esque and kind of magical. So yeah, if that's your thing, read the book of lost things. I really ramble today. Oh my gosh. Did I breathe once during this entire video? I don't think I did. <laughs> if you discovered even one new book from this video that you hadn't considered before, then I think my mission has succeeded. Hopefully next week I can make a video in which I kind of create my fall TBR. I'm gonna make a list of all the books that I'm really excited for to read in the autumn that also have very like autumnal vibes. Maybe I'll finally get into horror books. <laughs> Please leave in the comments below any more fall books that you would recommend to people and if you have any hidden gems, any like not like the typical ones that everyone always mentions, be sure to share. And if it turns out that everyone already knew every single book that I mentioned today, then I guess my taste is more basic than I already thought it was. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're gonna have a wonderful, wonderful autumn or a wonderful spring if you live on the other side of the world. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another one. Goodbye.